What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about my top five baits for the month of November. Can you guys believe that it's November already? Man, this year has, man, it has flown by. I can't believe that we're heading into the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, fall is in the air. Uh, leaves are falling, temps are dropping, and uh, I love it. But November, man, this year has flown by. So today's video, my top five baits for bass fishing the month of November. Now I just threw some stuff out here. Um, November, it's all about bait. We've been talking about that for the last couple months. The bait fish are schooling up, the balls of shad, the balls of gizzard, just all the different bait fish. You got your baby crappie, your baby bluegill, sunfish. It's all about the bait fish. So whatever bait fish you have in your fishery, those are the baits, the fish that you want to be mimicking, imitating to get more bites this time of the year. So I have uh, my favorite techniques for uh, the month of November. Now these videos are always fun to do because there's so many different techniques uh, that, that come to play in each month that we talk about, but limit, limiting it to uh, just five techniques is hard, but it's a lot of fun. So uh, the first one that I'm gonna talk about is this guy right here, the Alabama rig, the A rig. There probably isn't a better bait or technique on the market that represents bait fish, a ball of bait fish. Again, you find the bait, you're gonna find the bass this time of the year, those fish are feeding up. Uh, they're gonna feed all the way through winter and really just gorge themselves. You're gonna be looking for offshore schools of bait. You're gonna be looking for bait balls in the backs of pockets. You can go super deep, super shallow, everything in between, but the good old Alabama rig that's that flex rig. That's a rig that we designed a few years ago with Hog Farmer, lighter wire, a lot of action in this Alabama rig. Not super stiff wires, arms. Uh, you know, you run your three dummies, you got your three baits with hooks. Check your state's uh, regulations on the number of hooks. But the Alabama rig is a bait that you guys should be throwing from here on all the way through winter and through the spring. Now, depending on a bladed rig or just a non-bladed rig is totally up to you. Uh, if the water is clear, I typically go non-bladed. It's a, it's a less resistance in the water, less flash, uh, a little more natural looking. I can move it quicker this time of the year. Again, we're talking all about speed. As you transition into those colder water uh, months or, or uh, fisheries, you know, you're going to slow down, but um, I typically clear water, I'm going uh, non-bladed. If I need a little bit of flash, a little more vibration, dingy water, I might go with bladed. But um, an A-rig is now inserting itself back into the arsenal. Uh, and I, like I said, I'll, I'll be fishing that all the way through, through spring. But that November, that cool down month, pretty hard to beat the A-rig. Now, with that said, if you want to throw a single swim bait, it's going to be an underspin. Lots of different underspins on the market. There's little cool baits right here. I've really been messing them up with the uh, Gamakatsu and the uh, Largo Shad, the three inch Largo Shad. But an underspin, it can be fished on a spinning rod or a bait caster, but it's a single swim bait with a blade, just a lot of, a little bit more flash, uh, some vibration to make your bait stand out from the thousands of thread fins you know, in that bait ball. So the, the underspin is a great way uh, to catch them this time of the year. Again, if you don't wanna throw three or five or six, go with the single and throw the underspin. Now, if you are on a grass fishery, you can throw like an owner beast hook, something that's gonna be Texas rigged and rigged weedless that you can fish through and over the tops of the grass. Because again, this time of the year, the fish are chasing bait. So if you're on a highland reservoir uh, with clear water, those fish could be suspended just 20 feet down over 150 feet of water. Or if you're on a, a lowland reservoir or some kind of river system and you have lots of backwater, shallow backwaters, 
you're going to have grass, you're going to have those fish really pushing those bait balls into the backs of the cuts, the shallower water, uh, that's where you can get away with uh, the underspin rigged weedless, that way you can fish it around and through the cover. So with that said, if you are an A-rig guy, throw some little eighth ounce heads on there, three one eighth ounce heads, so it keeps your rig fairly light and you can fish that super shallow as well. So A-rig slash underspin is my number one. Number two is going to be top water. So top five techniques, I'm going with top water because right now you could be throwing a frog or a hell razor. I mean, you can be throwing a buzz bait or a horny toad or a frog on a mat. It can be completely different, but you need some kind of top water tied on. So same scenario. If you're open water and you're fishing, say you're fishing for spotted bass that are chasing bluebacks or uh, threadfin shad out in open water, you're going to be throwing a faster moving bait. Whopper plopper, hell razor, you know, something that you can cast and cover a lot of water. This is going to apply to all the different techniques minus the one finesse technique I have for you. You're covering water. These fish are going to be active. They're going to be feeding up. They want to eat. So don't be afraid to move fast. You actually can't move uh, fast enough. These fish straight up love hunting and chasing down fish this time of the year. So if I'm throwing top water and I'm throwing open water, I'm typically throwing some kind of bait that I can move fast. Like I said, either the whopper plopper or the hell razor, and then some kind of walking bait if I need to, either the shower blows, a shower blows, or the gunfish, um, you know, something that I can, I can work out there in open water if they are blowing up. Um, and then on the flip side, if you are on a grass fishery and you need to be throwing a frog, same type of thing. If you're fishing on mats, typically this time of the year, how I like to do it, um, you know, it's weird doing this video, we're talking about the top five baits in November, that's really when the top, when the frog bite gets good here on the TVA, the Tennessee River, Chickamauga, uh, Gunnersville. You know, out west, it was kind of like the transition into winter. Out here, it's go time to be power fishing with a frog. So how I kind of figure out what I'm gonna be throwing, uh, if I am frog fishing, if I am grass fishing, I'm gonna be throwing some kind of frog to cover water, either the tackle or the spro, the little flapping frog. You know, this is a frog that I can cast out. I can fish it on the grass lines. I can fish it on the mats, on the sparse grass, and I could just cover water. And I want to find which mat is good, which mat is holding fish, bait fish. And then once I do, then I can slow down and throw a walking frog, something that's not going to cover as much distance, but I could really pick apart that mat you know, pause it in the little holes in the grass. Uh, you know, that's when I'm gonna throw some kind of walking frog, either, either the, the, the snag proof or the mega bass or the bully wah too. Whatever your favorite grass frog is, that's when you're gonna throw that. But until you find them, throw a fast moving frog. All right, guys, there's top water. What do we got? We got three down. I think that's three. Uh, two, I don't know, I'm losing track. Next category is going to be some kind of crankbait. Deep, shallow, everything in between, you need some kind of crankbait. So I grabbed a couple for you. Obviously our favorite is gonna be the Tactical DD Crank. That's our favorite cold weather crank all the way through the early start of spring. Your colder water temps, those fish, are gonna be chasing. You can burn this thing on a seven, eight to one gear ratio reel. You cannot go too fast. The other one's gonna be a Rapala DT16. Those are both great must have crankbaits this time of the year. You're gonna be targeting fish in the, the 10 to 18 foot range with both of those crankbaits. Now on the flip side, just like I talked about with the other techniques, you go deep and then you go shallow. Either the Biggie, the Spro, 
or my personal favorite. You can still get them. I just did a video on these just a few weeks ago, the BDS 1 and 2. Look how small that crankbait is. This thing will run in a foot of water. So if you're the guy that is in the very back of a cut and you have bass blowing up, you're trying to get your top water to them, you're catching them on top water, but sometimes they're just not getting it and you need to go shallow subsurface, check out either the Spro or the Lucky Craft, okay? So that's the crankbait. So we got the A-Rig, the underspin, if you wanna throw a single bait, we got top water, we got fast moving, we got uh, uh, grass baits, frog baits. Next up for me is gonna be some kind of jerk bait, okay? Either it's a traditional jerk bait, that's the Shimano right there, or a fluke, a soft plastic jerk bait. You know, the, the Mega Bass, the Re-Range, the, the Lucky Craft, you know, more of an aggressive style uh, jerk bait. Again, these fish are erratic. You don't have to worry about the cold water temps because they're gonna be feeding up. And uh, if you are the guy that's fishing around grass, then you go with the fluke, the weedless version. So again, a jerk bait is something like the crankbait. You're gonna be covering water. You're getting real aggressive. Rip, 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 pause. Rip, 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 pause. Change up your cadence, but it's not, th this time of the year, it's not rip, wait 15, 20, 30 seconds, rip. You know, get aggressive with these jerk baits. You know, again, I've caught some of my biggest bass this time of the year already burning the bait in to make another cast or fishing it as fast as I can. And those fish just come unglued and chase it down. But uh, that's that flash boost right there in that Shimano. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, World Diver is such a, it's such a cool, unique jerk bait. You can get real aggressive with it, but again, it has that flash boost in there. You can see how just holding it has that little bit of, of flash in there, but you know, your 110 plus ones, your plus twos, your junior plus ones, all of those, those jerk baits are gonna work really well. Again, stick with your bait fish patterns, your shads, your bluegills, that sort of stuff, and you guys will catch fish. And then on the flip side, if you do need to go uh, weedless, you do need to fish around and over the grass, go with the fluke. So a jerk bait, either a traditional or a soft plastic jerk bait is a must this time of the year. What else do we have? Okay, I have one more kind of in-between bait and I have one finesse bait for you. I really tried to simplify it for you for finesse, but uh, I wanted to add these. These are an honorable mention. The spy bait, either the duo or the Spro. These things are beautiful and they are fish catchers. You can see it's a hard bait, right? It has a little prop on the front and the back. And like I said in previous videos, I've gained a ton of confidence in the spy bait. So if you're looking for a bait to interchange with your underspin or fish where you'd be fishing your jerk bait, throw one of these guys. Light line, five, six pound fluorocarbon. You can throw it on a BFS setup or a spinning setup but a spy bait is just a different presentation that works in these two categories, okay? So honorable mention. Now, last but not least, for you finesse guys, guys that don't want to power fish or reaction fish or throw an A-rig or a crank or a jerk bait all day, one, this was tough. I narrowed it down to one finesse technique and I went with the Nico rig. You know, you can either wacky rig it or put a, uh, a head, a heavy head or a weight in the head and uh, get it down deep, fish that 15 to 25 foot depth. But a Nico rig, there's that, that's that sink on the electric shad color. But a Nico rig is super universal. You can change, let me pull this weight out. You can change how heavy or light your Nico rig is going to be. Again, you got the VMC uh, bands on there. And that allows you to slide this up and down and change uh, where this bait is actually hooked. But a Nico rig is a bait that you can fish super shallow or you can fish it deep. Um, but it, it's going to uh, have a little bit larger profile than let's say a drop shot, something like that. But it's, um, 
It's my go-to finesse bait this time of the year. You know, if I'm really going into finesse and I'm just doing an all finesse video that I'm talking about your Ned rigs, talking about your drop shots, that sort of stuff. But if I only had one this time of the year, it's gonna be the Senko rigged uh, on a Nico rig or the Quiver. This is the one by Missile Baits. You guys know this is also another one of my favorites. 6.5 Quiver just has that uh, little different tail on it than the Senko. So when this thing has the, the, head, the weight in the head, it's down there working, this thing's just dancing all over the place in the current. Again, don't be afraid of too much motion on your bait. But November is that transition time into winter. These fish are on full feed mode. You know, you go out to your favorite fishery, you're gonna have fish blowing up over deep water, and you're gonna have fish blowing up in super shallow water, and there's gonna be fish moving around eating everywhere in between and with these five or six techniques or a version of you guys will catch fish all month long now in december we'll start kind of slowing down start talking about colder weather colder water as those water temps drop fishes their uh, fish their metabolism starts slowing down and they're not running around as much as they are right now so they are feeding up don't be afraid to move fast uh, throw a, one or some of these baits on your fishery, a version of these baits on your fishery, and you guys will catch fish. Can't believe it. We're already talking about November. Pretty soon it's going to be the holidays. This year is just flying by. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and down below in the comment section, let me hear your top one or two confidence baits as we head into winter for the month of November. As always guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.